time to cook for your wives. Wives, it's time to serve your husbands after he's done cooking. And all the men say, hoo, 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 hoo. it's time to stop all of the social things. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is the sad part is that you may be chatting with someone online all the way across the world that you may never see again. And you've got a child in the living room that is desperate to spend time with you that just longs to spend time with you. And I'm not saying all of those things are bad, but what I am telling you is this. Make sure it's in perspective because when you spend less time on social medias and you flip that dynamic around and you spend more time with family, let me tell you something. Something happens in the supernatural when you put family first. God is calling us to that. He wants us to understand, and there's no better time than this Advent season where we stop and reflect and say, God, will you move? Can I slow down enough that you would change my heart? The last thing is this. It's time to spend less time watching and more time worshiping. More time worshiping. You know, I think about time spent, and, 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 I, and look, I, I, I say spend less time watching, and I know I, I'm not someone that stands up here and says, I don't watch TV. I don't watch my favorite movies. I don't watch my shows. I, I get that. DVR, godly. There's a lot of things. <laughs> but let me tell you something. What's happened is, is we, we have lost this focus. We, we, we have We've said, I'm going to spend three hours of my day watching something that has, in fact, sometimes we're watching the rerun that we've seen ten times, and we're going to watch that over and over and over again instead of going and worshiping our Creator, instead of worshiping, it, worshiping at the very core of everything that we are. See, we would rather spend time worshiping the tube than worshiping Christ. And I'm telling you, in this season, may God strike at your heart to stop and slow down and say, no, it's time to get back to what matters. Let me read to you this psalm, and this psalm is, is beautiful. It says in Psalm chapter 1, starting with verse 2, it says this, but they, who is they? They are those that are redeemed. They are the ones that God has covenant with. He's talking about God's people. He's talking about those that have surrendered their heart to Christ, those that are living for Christ. He says, but they, they Delight in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on that day and night. And because of this, look, they are like trees, what? Say it aloud. They are like trees planted along the riverbank. They're planted. They're planted along the riverbank. These are, they meditate on this word. They meditate on Christ. They meditate on their relationship. And because of this great meditation, they find themselves like trees planted by streams of living water. That living water is the Holy Spirit that begins to move in our lives and he begins to strengthen our roots. And look what it says. It says, and they bear fruit in each season. The ebbs and flow of life is that you're going to be on the mountaintop. Then you're going to be in the valley. You're going to be in the mountaintop. You're going to be in the valley. And then you're going to be in the greatness and the fullness of all. And then you're going to be in the desert sometimes. But the Bible says that they that are planted by the river, those that are planted by the streams, that they will bear fruit in every season. That means that no matter if you're in the desert, you're bearing fruit. No matter if you're on the mountaintop, you're bearing fruit. No matter if you're in the valley, you're bearing fruit. Because you're in the flow. You're in the the river, and we've got to spend less time watching and more time worshiping God because he is the only one that can breathe that vitalization in our life. Worshiping, moving, let him move in our lives today. Let him change who we are. You know, it's time, and it's so hard because, man, you, you work hard. You work hard. You work hard, you play hard. When you get home, what do you want to do? You want to watch mindless TV. You just want to turn on. 
Because I don't have to do anything to stare. But when we do that, we disengage from that river. And that three and a half hours that you have, you squeeze that five minutes of God in there. And now out of 24 hours, out of 1,440 minutes, you've given God five. And you wonder why we're in the state in which we are. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to just pray today. And I just, you know, I want to I encourage you today. This is all about being encouraged and allowing the Spirit of God just to move in our hearts and lives. And Father, we just come to you right now and we just say you are worthy to be worshipped, God. You, you are worthy to be praised. And I just thank you so much for all that you're doing in, in our lives, Lord. Just teach us, God, to, to spend less so that we can give out more. I know Pastor Eric's going to be talking about more next week and, and, and how to give more. And Lord, I pray that, that this message has prepared the ground for what he would share next week, that we would be able to go out, that we would be different Lord, you said that the wise men came, that they had wisdom and they obeyed you, God. And because of that, their, your life, Lord, was not affected. Your plan, Lord, was intact. And Lord, as you went to the cross, you bore every sickness, every sin, and every disease. And Lord, we thank you for that wisdom. I thank you for those men that were there. And Lord, I pray that right now that you would give these men and women great knowledge and wisdom. Help us to not just be hearers, but to be doers of your word. Lord, there may be someone here today that they don't have relationship with you. Maybe they've never come to that place where they acknowledge that they need you, Jesus. Maybe you're, you've just been this fairy tale, or maybe you've been this person off on this far off distance, but today... Maybe you're here today and you just sense that God's presence is right there. He's tugging at your heart and he's saying, I want you to come to me. I want you to get things right. I want you to repent of your sin. I want you to turn toward me. You know that the Holy Spirit is here in this place and he's drawing you. He's changing you. He desires you to come into relationship today. And the most beautiful thing is, is that there's nothing that you and I can do, but it's something that he does everything. He's the one that cleans us up. He gets us ready. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask quickly, if there's anyone here today that would say, Brian, I'm just going to be real and I'm going to be raw and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say, I need this Savior in my life. I'm turning away from my old life and I'm turning to a new life. I'm turning over a new leaf today. I will not be the same again. I need Jesus to come in and change me right in this place with every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anyone here that would just lift your hand up and say, Brian, that's me. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? That's me. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Anybody else? Just saying yes to God. I'm turning it over. Don't leave here. Yes. I see that hand. Anyone else? Just lift those hands up. Yes. Yes. I see that hand. Just, just keep them high just for a moment. Just for a moment. Yes. Yes saying, man, I'm turning it over. I'm not, I'm not leaving the same way. This is what I want to ask you to do. Every week we have an opportunity to open up these altars and, and, and what I'd simply do is we just pray and we just believe God that he would come in and he would touch your heart, he would touch your life. And can we just all stand as a family together as we begin to pray and, and what I'm going to ask is, is those that lifted their hands and said, Man, I need Jesus. I need him to come in and change me. Would you do me a favor? I'm going to walk down here and I'd love to shake your hand. And we're going to pray a prayer of faith together. And we're just going to believe God that today is going to be different. If you did not raise your hand, that's okay. It's not too late. But let me tell you what's about to happen. This place is about to turn into a Holy Ghost roaring session. We are going to begin clapping and celebrating with the angels. Because what you are about to do is step out in faith. And you're going to trust God with your very life, with your very soul. And so when I call and when I count to three would you do me a favor will you step out of your seats and journey will you celebrate on the count of three one two and three will you come and meet me here at this altar right now just say yes just say, say right here with me
just for a second. We're going to pray all together. That's all right. We're going to pray all together. God bless you. God bless you. Stay right here just for a moment. Good to see you again. I just want to wait one more minute. If there's anybody else, just say yes to God. Don't, Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Let's just wait right here for a moment. If you will, let me just let me just share something with you. Today is a brand new day. And, and these speakers hate me right now, but today is a brand new day. And what you're about to do is about to change something. And it's something that I can't change for you. It's something you can't change. It's something the Lord's about to do. It's about to change your life forever. You, you're about to be flipped upside down. You don't even know what God has in store for you. But what it takes is a repentant heart and just someone that says, you know, God, I, I need you more than anything. And he's the one that cleans us up. He's the one that changes us. We don't have, you know, we just have to trust him. We have to be disciple. But what God is saying is we just have to trust him with our whole heart, with our whole life. And so today I just want to just pray with you. We're going to pray. If you want to pray out loud, Journey Church, if you'll join me, we're going to pray with these folks that have stepped out in faith. We're just going to say this together. Lord Jesus, will you change me? Step into my life and create in me a new heart. I repent of my sins today and I turn to you. Holy Spirit, will you come into me? Will you change my life? Will you help me to live for you all the days of my life that I would never be the same again? Fill me up. Touch my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, Lord. I trust you today with my life. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate? If you'll just stay right here. Pastor Donald and Stephanie just want just two seconds of your time. They're going to give you a Bible today. And they're going to just go over some real quick pointers with you. Come on, Journey Church. Will you celebrate? We serve, we serve a gracious God, and uh, man, there's nothing better than to see people, even in this time and season, you know, he is not through with us yet. That's good news, isn't it? Well, let's just say a prayer of dismissal, but I do, before we do, I just want to remind you of two things. Number one is, ladies, if you were not planning on just clearing your entire schedule for Wednesday night, trust me, you do not want to miss the Christmas party of all parties. I'm telling you, it's a blast. Mary Jo's famous cookie swap. You're not going to have anything better this season. I'm telling you, bring your cookies. You're going to have a blast. Come out this coming Wednesday at 7. The other thing is this. We're looking for great home group facilitators, those that would like to host a, a small group, and we we would like to kick off this season starting in February. If you are interested, you can see Frank and Lori Ray, who did the Get Connected portion of our service, myself, Pastor Donald, Pastor Eric, we are all here. We want to make sure that people are getting connected in group life, because that is where real life happens. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, have a great day, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's message. For more audio and video content, please visit us online at journeychurch.org.